Hello everyone from Edu Plus One. Today's topic is try accept command. Let us start with what are errors and exceptions in Python. Looking at this program, we can see that there is one syntax error in it and this program will not run. You can also see the output is giving syntax error. That means we are not following the syntax of this program and the Python syntax says that there has to be a comma here. As you can see that this is a program which has a function called average. It is finding average of four numbers, but uh, we are giving some kind of wrong formula. We are dividing it by zero. So don't you think that this program cannot return any definite value? And when I'm calling this function average in the main program, I'm calling it with the name average A, B, C, D. These four values I have already taken from the user and I'm storing the answer in answer variable. How would you, how would a compiler react to this kind of program? When this program is being run, you can see that you are entering all the four numbers, five, seven, nine, and 33. But definitely there is a runtime error, which is called zero division error. And if you see the last line of the output screen, it is giving you zero division error, that is division by zero. This error is caught during runtime and these errors which occur during runtime during, due to wrong formula or wrong input given, they are called exceptions. And normally the Python raises the exception when it encounters such kind of situations. Now, how to handle these exceptions? Yes, we have a solution. We can handle the exceptions with try accept command. And with the help of Python exception handling procedures, we can manage all the issues that we discussed and we can avoid intermittent failures of our coding. How do we use the try accept command to enable exception handling? We have to write a try code and this try block will actually contain the main code of your program. And in case there is a chance that there will be an exception in the program or might be an exception in your program, then you can catch those exceptions in the accept clause. So let us look at the syntax of the try accept clause. So you have to start with the keyword try, put a colon, press enter, give some indentation and write the main code. Then if there are any exceptions in your program which you feel that there can be, then you put them under the accept clause. We say the, again the keyword accept. Then we name the exception. There are various standard exceptions that we will be dealing soon. So accept exception one colon and write the statement which you want to print or which you want to execute whenever that exception is caught. Then we can have multiple exceptions. So you can go for accept another exception and exception two colon and then again the statements which you want to execute. And if you do not want to have the exceptions and you want to execute else clause, then you can put it under else and else clause will have statement when there is no exception, right? And finally, yes, it is an important clause. Finally, again, a keyword. You can write the keyword finally, put a colon, enter indentation and then you can write any code which you want to execute in this program whether the try code is followed or accept clause is followed i mean to say whether there is an exception in the program or not this particular block will always be executed it means to say that whether it is a try or it is an accept the final clause is going to be executed Have a look at this program. This program is finding average of a list of numbers. I'm finding the length of the list, putting it in the variable m. There is a variable sum initialized as zero. And with a for loop, I'm iterating the list and I'm saying for i and l, I'm finding sum. So the sum is finding sum of all the elements of the list. And finally, I want to return sum divided by m. That means the average of the sum of numbers which are there in the list. So in the main program, we are starting with a try clause and keeping the main code inside the try clause. I am asking the user to enter length of the list. And when I say length of the list, uh, I say that L is equal to I for I in range 1 comma N plus 1 because this is a kind of list comprehension actually in which I'm creating the list on my own. Since I already know the length of the list is n, so I'm iterating the loop from 1 to n plus 1 
and in the list I'm putting all I's actually so if I say n is 6 let's say now if I say n is 6 have a look at the output please enter length of the string 6 uh, if I say length of the list is 6 then within the list I have the numbers 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 calling the function average with the list L so all the elements of the list will be passed on to the function L average and here we are finding the sum 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 and we will be dividing it by 6 and when I return the answer the answer is caught in the variable answer and I'm printing average is and finally the answer is 3.5 you can see it in the output screen also since this program is running smoothly there is no zero division error so accept clause will not be followed have a look again at the left side of your screen again you can see that i am using the same program average and try accept command with zero division error but this time on the output screen i am changing the input as zero that means i want to enter length of the list as zero so when i enter length of the list as zero and uh, it executes this program it is pretty clear then it would go, when it goes to the function average right here there is no list basically because uh, in the main program when i say l is equal to i for i in range 1 to n plus 1 since n is 0 so 1 comma 1 this particular range 1 comma 1 in fact so this particular loop is not going to work for me right so list is empty and when list is empty and it goes to find the average again the length which is m is equal to length of l m is 0 so definitely sum is also 0 so 0 divided by 0 it becomes like this so anyway when it is division by 0 and it goes back to the main program it catches this exception as 0 division error right and uh, except clause is followed and you can see and check on the output screen it is giving please check your inputs right so that means this is the output if the input is given as 0 so this is how you will catch zero division error. Now finally if we modify this program and we just add one more clause called finally clause and we can see that finally clause will always be executed whether I enter length of the list as zero or not it doesn't matter. So just check the output. It is saying please enter length of the list six finding the average 3.5 but finally clause is also executed. Following is the list of standard exceptions that are already embedded in the compiler and let's have a look at them one by one. One is called IO error that you can write in your except clause except IO error but uh, this error is actually the input output error. This kind of error you encounter when you don't file any file, any file. maybe it is a binary file or a text file that you are searching and trying to open it. So any failed IO operation is going to give this error. You can catch this error also in your program in try except. Then we have very common exception that is called EOF error, end of the file error. This is normally used in try except command whenever I'm trying to scan all the file and reading all the records line by line in a text file or maybe that I'm reading objects in a binary file. So I'm going to use it quite frequently. Then zero division error, this we have seen already. This you can catch whenever you feel that there is a chance of any division by zero. Import error comes whenever I'm trying to import any module which is not present in my existing path or maybe it is not even present in the compiler. Index error, again an important error. This error comes when I'm trying to access the list with a particular index which actually does not exist. That means it is going out of range. Like I have a list of five numbers and I'm trying in a for I loop, I'm saying that I'm trying to access the element L5. So if the list is five numbers, I have the index from L0 to L4. There is no element called L5, right? So index error you are going to encounter when you are going to access the list with the particular index which is not there. So it is subscript out of range in the list iteration. Name error, yes, I'm going to print something, let's say print y, but there is nothing called as y, no value 
has been given to y y does not even exist in the name space so then it is not able to find any local or global name so that will give you name error indentation error yes when i am not following the indentation rules that means shifting the margins to the right side which i have to follow during coding of the program value error when i am trying to input any particular value which is a string and i am later on using it in my calculation so i need to convert it into an int and then use it in my calculation so value error whenever i am going to receive any value which is of incorrect data type that will give me the value error and type error when there is a mismatch between operand and operator let's say i am trying to add a string and an integer that will definitely give me a value error key error i am going to i want to actually print any particular element or value from the dictionary so whenever i have to let's say there is a dictionary of name and phone numbers and i am trying to access phone number of a person who does not exist in the dictionary so that is going to give me the key error there are many other errors also but these are the list of common standard exceptions that you encounter right